get a phone call earlier from uh, Mark Robinson's office. He's a Tory candidate for this constituency. He wants to know if it's right to do some canvassing outside at lunchtime. Oh, that'll be interesting. We've got John Hughes from the Labour lot doing exactly the same thing. Odd day. In what way? If I was to stand in the election to be an MP, what would you think about that? As what? As me. Why? Lies, lies, and more lies. Let me just say That's this what we to say you. to Mr. Let Hughes. Me say this and that to is you. resoundingly what the and whole country is saying to Mr. Hughes. And to his friends in the cabinet. What are they going on about? He can lie about something this week. He can lie about something else next week. And he did lie about Iraq. He didn't tell the truth any road. But you wouldn't trust that Tory bugger any further than you could chuck him, would you? You know, I could do better than this lot. Couldn't we all? You could. Police, please, love. No, you really could, Ros. Ros Pritchard, manager of Green Gage's Superstore, Eatonswill. I've got two grown men verbally abusing each other and it's now descended into a brawl. So I may need some backup. Maxwell! Eddie! Yeah, Excuse me, gentlemen. This is a superstore, not a pop car park. And I'd appreciate it if you took your dispute elsewhere. I was here first. No, you weren't. Yes, I would like to take this opportunity to say, not just for myself, but possibly on behalf of a lot of other people, how very, very disappointing it is that the only choice we've got who represents us in Parliament amounts to little more than you two. Could I just say... No, I'd really rather you didn't. You tell them, Roz. I could do better than you lot. Yeah, they all say that, love. Right, come on, we've spent enough time here. Hello, uh, Graham Smith, Lady Dems. Is it all right? No, you, uh... go away! <laughs> <laughs> could do better than that lot. Any of them. Mum! You're on the telly! I'm not impressed. And not just with these two either. I mean, people are genuinely stumped over who to vote for this time. Oh! They just think they're all as bad as each other. Oh, I mean, damn what bugger. Is Sorry, sugar. Shh. It's us. It's people. It's about us. It's for us. So why do we end up relying on that lot who talk in riddles when they're not insulting each other? What we need, actually, is more women in Parliament. Oh, wow. God. Oh, God. That is French. not a cogent what discourse. Shut up. Stop it. Women don't muck about with the truth like men do. Because women don't need to. Because women can handle being wrong occasionally. They're not inflicted with this obsession to be right all the time like men are. Why are you talking so about women? Sort of women it's true. It's true. It's true. It's true, actually. Women who can do a bit of straight talking. Women with vision. That's what we're short of. Not all these men who like the sound of their own voices and I'm yes. got a decent support <laughs> between them. Mrs Pritchard may have unwittingly raised an interesting Ooh, The store looks nice, doesn't it? Does the increasingly protected and rarefied world of the Westminster bubble no longer know how to talk to the ordinary people of somewhere like Eatonswood. I'm sorry, it's not working. James Hague, it helps you sick a tape in slot, Dad. Oh, oh now, do you not any of them? You fill in a form, and you get somebody to propose you, then ten more to second you, which was easy, because the staff at the store were more than happy to oblige. Then I took it back, signed a declaration, and um, gave them a cheque for £500. You mean, you've already put your name forward? Really? Well, that's what I was trying to tell you outside. Or they'll be a bit on top of that for uh, leaflets and a few posters and so forth. You don't think this is something that we should have discussed? Well, possibly, yes. Only, uh... So, these leaflets, what will they say on them? Well, I'll say who I am and what I do and why I feel compelled to stand. Ros. What? You don't know anything about politics. I watch the news. You need policies. No, I don't. No, you do. I'm not going to win. Why not? 
I'm just making a point. It's like I was telling the woman on Newsnight. Newsnight? Yeah, I rang them to tell them I was standing. Well, I assumed that business with John Hughes would be on the six o'clock with him being a minister. So I thought Newsnight might want to follow it up. And they did. They do. They were very keen. I spoke to Kirsty Walk. Scottish. Very pleasant. I know who Kirsty Walk is. I've got to be at a studio in Leeds at 10 o'clock. Mrs. Pritchard, you've decided to stand as an independent after what happened today in your store in Eatonswill. Is there an intelligent point we made here, or are you just somebody else that likes the sound of your own voice? An intelligent point to be made? Well, yes, I think so, Kirsty. I mean, people do not know who to vote for in this election. They talk about the lesser of two evils, as was sadly and vividly demonstrated today in my store. But that's not a choice, is it? And having the option to vote for someone who, by their own admission, in an interview you gave this afternoon to a local newspaper, has never been involved or even interested in politics before, is that going to widen their choice? I think so. I hope so. You see, I've had my eyes open today, Kirsty. Politics isn't rocket science. I think they like to keep us at a distance from it all by talking the way that they do, in riddles, verbal fencing, avoiding... Okay, so... Six people have rung me since tea time, offering to stand on the same platform in their own constituencies. So, yes, I do think there's an intelligent point to be made, and clearly other people do as well. Well, what is your platform exactly? Well, at this stage, I'm just making a point about the fact that when people aren't interested, they don't get involved. And they need to. This is our country. This is our politics. Ros Pritchard, they're in Leeds. Is that it? You've had another eight calls. So, in the face of widespread apathy and downright boredom with what goes on at Westminster, is there an increased role for the independent candidate? Mm. Political scientist and former FT political editor Miranda Lennox joins me now. Miranda, lack of choice. Is that why, broadly speaking, people simply aren't interested in this election? Yes. I think Ros Pritchard has hit the nail on the head. <laughs> the three big parties are all squabbling amongst themselves, all after the same ground, failing dismally to capture the public's imagination. And if an independent were to come along and do precisely that, to the point where they had significant numbers prepared to stand for Parliament, it could all become very interesting. Isn't she a one-trick pony, though? Mm. Independents Charming. often stand on very mm. limited platforms, yes. but. Mrs. Pritchard has got people talking, mm -hmm. and that's the key thing. I think it was significant there that she said she was making a point at this stage, and I wonder if she hasn't got more up her sleeve than she's letting on. <laughs> I don't think she was prepared for the response she's had. If you'd like to wait there, please. I've never been bothered about politics, but then when I saw you on the news, I thought, why not? I'm an intelligent, capable woman. Why aren't I interested? Well, I am now. You'd have to use your own resources. I've got no funding. I'm delighted other people want to stand on my ticket. Ros Pritchard's office. Come in. Uh, Max Goodall can do handouts for you. Uh, leaflets, posters, rosettes, little flags, anything you want. All top quality and all at cost price. Because mm. he said if you get instead of any of them three wankers, it, Max's word, not mine, he'd laugh his socks off. How many people have you got standing? Well, 42 at the last count. All women, funnily enough. I haven't spoken to them all yet, but... Uh, uh, Mrs... Sorry, Ros. Do you understand how extraordinary this is? Well, yes, I, I, I do. Now, 42 people want to stand on your platform in 42 constituencies. 43. And it's less than 24 hours since you put your name forward. It's extraordinary. Well, can I, just out of interest... Go on. ...ask where you stand on Europe? I don't. What you feel about the economy? Look, I... Well, surely this is your biggest strength. What, the fact that I don't know anything about politics? You have an uncynical instinct for what the people want. And you're not bringing your own baggage. But you need focus. You need a dynamic, coordinated communication strategy. Look, I'm not what you think I am. <laughs> I don't think you know what you are. Yet. Every so often, someone comes along and changes things forever. And it's never the kind of person people were expecting. Rose, <clears throat> I would like to donate £10 million to your national campaign fund. 
see. Well, um, there isn't a national campaign. As such, it's just me and these others. Six last night, 43 today. How many tomorrow? Why would you want to give me ten million pounds? Because I believe in you. I think what you're doing is extraordinary. And I'd like to help. Mom, if anyone on earth is equal to this in their own bonkers way, you are. Take the money. Employ the people you need. You think this country is run by people we can't trust anymore. People who have let us down. So do something. That's what you said yesterday. You've already done something unique. And now you're in a unique position to take things further. It's elegant. It's clear. Roz is at the centre of the centrist. We borrow from the left and steal from the right, and we make it our own. Bang in the middle of Middle England. What do you think of it, Roz? I like the purple. Within two weeks of standing for Parliament, Roz Pritchard is fielding more than 150 candidates. One Purple Alliance hopeful is Beverly Clark, a partner from a law firm in Huddersfield. What Ross said hit home, with me, with others. You don't know who to vote for because the choices are all problematic. Ross has got people interested. People who wouldn't normally open the political pages are opening them. People who wouldn't normally buy certain newspapers are buying them. She's got people thinking, if she can do it, I can. She energises people. No, look. It's part of the great British tradition at election time for these oddities to pop out of the woodwork. They're usually harmless. Ros Pritchard is potentially more hazardous, not least for New Labour. She's already more popular than the Lib Dems, or so what? She's personally more popular than Tony Blair, big deal. But what I think will happen on May the 12th, and what is possibly interesting, is that she will divide the votes on the left rather than the right. And the outcome I predict, as I would and indeed do, will be to a Tory advantage. So yeah, I'm a big fan, Ros. What makes me different is the simple fact that I'm not a politician. Politicians lie. That's why people struggle with who to vote for. When politicians may or may not be telling the truth, who can you trust? Someone who isn't a politician. <laughs> exactly. Is it? I can see why you thought I'd be upset, but they're taking me seriously. And look at it. Can you imagine how much money they spent doing that? It must be all over the country. It's 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 big bananas. They're frightened of you. Yeah. This is a really extraordinary political development. We've only got three weeks to go before the country goes to the polls. And yet another 27 backbench MPs, all women, in the last hour since nominations closed, have said they're going to defect to Mrs Pritchard's Purple Alliance Party. The senior politicians have so far not responded, but speaking to people in the corridors at Westminster, there's an inclination to dismiss Mrs Pritchard as a bit of a maverick behind closed doors, I imagine altogether different conversations going on, an entirely different story. Mr Walker, what's your reaction to the latest eight backbench Tory MPs you've just defected? Uh, I think it's important not to overreact. <laughs> Isn't that difficult when your party's hemorrhaging out the back door? It, it needs to be kept in perspective. Two more have defected in the last few minutes. Jenny Monroe and Imogen Aiken, any reaction? Um, I, I've not had that information, I really can't remember. Catherine. Paul. Now we're pulling Guy Ferris out of the Newsnight special. We want you to go on the set. Fine, why? And they've got Ros Pritchard lined up. Oh, we want a woman opposite her. We want you to go straight for the jugular. Oh. Uh. 
Oh, damn. Hello? Is everything all right? Um, I I've started early and I haven't brought any sanitary bloody things. Oh, don't panic. Panic ye not. Which do you prefer? Pants or the other sort? The other sort, um, ideally. Be prepared, that's my motto. <laughs> yes, mine too, usually. Or one of them. Uh, what was one thing and another? Are you there? Oh. <laughs> Thank you. You're my good deed for the day. If only more people thought like you. Oh, I think most people do. If you look deep enough. Hello. I'm going to wipe the floor with you when we get on the air. Right. Well, I suppose that's your job. Ooh, I like your shoes. You're taller in real life, aren't you? Do you know what you're doing? I'm rewriting the political map of the country. <laughs> really? Well, that's what it said in The Independent this morning. And the Telegraph on Monday hinted at it, <laughs> reluctantly. I got a starred first in PPE at Oxford when I was 19. The following... What's that then? Sports? No. The following year I was the youngest ever president of the Union. Then I spent a year at Harvard studying for my Masters. Um, that's not golf. After which... After which you came back to the LSE and did your doctorate on privatisation in the global economy. Six months later, at the age of, uh, oh, still 24, you turn around a 16,000 Labour majority and knock Margaret Thatcher into second place as the youngest female Tory MP ever. All that, and what? 16, 17 years later, you've still never been the Chancellor of the Exchequer, have you? And that's what you really want, isn't it, Catherine? He's not even going off you the Shadow Treasury this time, is he? He's going to offer it to your old pal, Paul Critchley. You'll sometimes wonder whether you've been wasting your time. You've done your homework? Does that surprise you? Do you know, I thought you were really rather charming to begin with. Refreshing, interesting. Largely because you didn't appear to believe all the hyped up crap that was talked about you. But it gets dangerous when you start to believe it yourself. Why is it that somebody as committed and brilliant and inspired as you gets persistently overlooked for the one job that you really want? Why is that, hmm? Is it because they're frightened of you? Is it because you're a woman? Perhaps you're in the wrong party. Have you thought about that? Can you seriously, I mean, seriously, think that you have a snowball's chance in hell of winning this election, Mrs. Pritchard. I still think I'll be lucky to win my own seat, frankly. But if I do, if I did, and other people standing on my thing do as well, I don't know. I think I'm probably going to need all the help I can get. Catherine. Are you offering me a job? Are you asking? Starting, boys. Good evening. Welcome to a Newsnight election special live from Leeds. You heard it here first. Within the past few minutes, it's been confirmed that Catherine Walker, the Tory party shadow health minister, has defected to Ros Pritchard's Purple Alliance party. 
Because this has all happened literally within the past few minutes, Ms. Walker has decided not to appear on the show this evening. Shit. However, I do still have with me Geraldine Woodyatt, the Secretary of State for Education, Harriet Lewis, the Liberal Democrat spokesperson on international affairs, and of course, the amazing, if I may say so, Mrs. Pritchard. <laughs> It's six o'clock on Thursday the 12th of May. Good morning. This is Today with James Nofty and John Humphreys. The news headlines this morning read by... Vol In an hour's time, polling stations up and down the country will open. A Britain's voters are turning out in record numbers. What promised eight weeks ago to be one of the dullest elections ever has turned out to be exactly the opposite. Minister arrived bright and early to vote in his Sedgefield constituency, as did Wells Pritchard in Eatonswill. Who am I voting for? I voted for us, man. I don't know anyone who in. So are these. Yellow up there for Lib Dems, and now watch, Michael, look at this, look at the purple alliance rippling down the map. Now that looks dramatic, but that's what will happen if the polls are right. That'll be the picture tonight. Rebecca Finch, the Purple Alliance Party, 19,687. It is really very interesting here how Mrs. Pritchard has managed to wake voters up all over the country. You can see these big majorities for the Purple Alliance. It is really a quite spectacular picture of success for this extraordinary new party. And the press. <laughs> oh, they might love you to bits right now. We'll give them a couple of months. You know, one slip, one mistake, they'll crucify you. you now they'll hang you out to dry and they'll have no mercy. Where's Rose? Oh, she's. They've um... finished the counting. Where is she? They need her up on stage for the result. God, she's got her phone switched off. I don't want Ross to do this job. It's not fair on me. It's not fair on the kids. Quite frankly, it's not fair on her. What are you mad? She's not just about to win her own seat here. Another ten seats out there and she's gone past the post. Oh, Jesus. You can't do this to her. I won't let you. She needs you. She needs all of us. It's Moran. I need a car. Right. This is an unbelievable picture. I mean, just look at the Purple Alliance here. Up there in the northwest, nearly all of it purple. Down in London, look at it purple. Catherine Walker's seat, by the way, they're flashing away. She won that seat with a huge majority. It's a most extraordinary performance by Mrs. Pritchard. Ros, you don't go AWOL. You never go AWOL. I'm sorry. And you never, ever switch off your sodding telephone. No, I had to. There was a sign. There are some people for whom exceptions are the norm. Prime Minister, it's for you. Hello? Mrs. Pritchard? Yes? It's Tony Blair. Congratulations. You've done something astonishing. Have I? I wanted to say good luck. Oh. You'll need it. We all do, now and again. That's very, um... nice of you. Are you all right? I'm in hospital. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it's not me. It's um, it's a friend, but he's all right now. Just, um, 
I didn't realise how things were going with them. Um, not being near a television and uh, so forth. I've got to go. Well, um, well uh, thanks for ringing. But ring me if ever I can... Yeah. Well, you know, be of help. Yes. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. God help us, everyone. <laughs>